Welcome to day 16 of this series. Inside every neuron in a neural network, there is a moment of decision. The neuron receives a bunch of input, does some math, and then asks, should I fire or stay quiet? That decision point, that's the activation function. Mathematically, after a neuron computes its weighted sum, it passes this through an activation function to produce an output. Without activation functions, your entire neural network would collapse into a single linear transformation no matter how many layers you stack. Hence why, if you have two linear functions f1 of x and f2 of x, their composition is still just a linear transformation. The activation function introduces non-linearity, which makes deep learning possible. Take ReLU as an example. It's beautifully simple. Negative inputs get zeroed out and all the positive inputs pass through unchanged. This creates sparse representations where only some neurons fire, mimicking biological neural networks. How do we choose the right activation function? For hidden layers, ReLU is your default choice. It's computationally efficient and avoids vanishing gradients. If your neurons are dying, for example, always outputting zero, then use this function where alpha is a small parameter. Your output layer depends on your problem. For example, sigmoid is good for binary classification, softmax for multiclass, or linear for regression problems. The nature of your problem always dictates this choice. Remember, the choice of activation function is not arbitrary. It determines how your network learns, what kind of functions it can represent, and how efficiently gradients flow during training. So tomorrow we will discuss convolutional neural network, and we will see how everything what we have covered so far in this series to teach computer how to see by detecting edges, textures, and eventually entire objects.